Hello friends, this is Ananya from Audio Stories for You. Here I am back with one of the short stories written by James S. Lee. The story is The Coming of the Tiger. So, let's begin. The Coming of the Tiger In the year 1894, Mr. Lee, then 22 years of age, became mechanical engineer in a mining settlement on the northeast frontier of India. Here he tells one of the many exciting adventures that befell him. I was in grand form. I found life very interesting, for there was plenty of variety here. I have seen a man-eater, a tiger, not only that, but I have smelt its foul breath on my face and have almost felt its claws when reaching for me within a few inches on my body. Yet I am still alive, but the memory of it will live with me forever. Those hours of fear were torture far more acute than my pain. A mental torture which I never before realized was possible to be produced by fear. Yes, believe me, fear can be more agonizing than bodily pain. I was sleeping in my bed when I was awakened in the early hours of the morning by a coolie standing under my window calling Sahib, Sahib. As soon as I awakened, I got up and went to the open window, a window which contained no glass, only a wooden lowered shutter. Sahib Harkul Bundhe, said the Kuli, meaning the fan has stopped. This was a very serious matter. I knew that there were more than a hundred men and women working underground on the night shift and soon the air underground would be unbreathable and work would have to stop. The fan must be got going at once. I got up and dressed quickly. Meanwhile, sending the coolie for one of my fitters who had a hut just below my compound. Lukai, the fitter, an old man, something like an Egyptian mummy in appearance, came up to my compound, carrying a hurricane lamp and a large pipe wrench, while the coolie fireman followed carrying some tools. It was no joke, really, for we had to walk about half a mile through the jungle before we got to the fan, which was situated in an isolated spot, right in the heart of the jungle and high up the hillside. I was always scared on this trip at night time and I had made it a few times under similar conditions. The fan had a habit of stopping sometimes at night. It might be the feed pump of the boiler which had gone wrong or perhaps the coolie had allowed the water to get out of sight in the gorge class when he would get scared, draw the fire and come down for a fitter. I was scared because the jungle was known to be infested by tigers and leopards and many natives that had been killed at one time or another in the district. As we walked along the winding path up the side of the hill with thick jungle on either side, the old man was fairly trembling and muttering to himself, which means literally some day tiger eat. The coolie was the only one of us who appeared not to be afraid. But then perhaps he had no imagination. He was a poor specimen of humanity, naked with the exception of a loin cloth and coal black with spindle legs and big feet and his face and arms were covered with spilitic sores. 
I could certainly have taken my rifle with me, but it would not have been much protection at night time. A tiger could spring out on us before I could see it, before I could use it, or a leopard could jump down on us out of a tree as we passed underneath. Besides, I knew that I would come in for a good deal of shove from the other Europeans. I carried a hunting knife only, although I reckoned that the chances of us meeting a tiger were about 100 to 1 against. This did not seem to help much. Arrived at that spot, I proceeded to investigate. The place was a leveled and cleared portion of the hillside towering above us. Here, there was a horizontal engine and a large vertical boiler standing on a massive concrete foundation and driving by means of a leather belt, the fan, which was built in the hillside. In front of me, the jungle sloped away steeply down to the valley below. The boiler fire was out and the steam had fallen to a few pounds pressure and steam and Water were leaking into the furnace. I knew that there was a tube leaking, probably the uptake tube. It was a very old boiler and all I could do was to make a temporary repair. Leaving Lukai and a coolie to blow off the water and take off the manhole cover, I proceeded down the hill by a different route to the mine entrance to see the foreman miner and tell him to withdraw the coolies to repair would take the rest of the night to make. By the time I got back, I found that they had got the water blown off and the manhole opened, leaving an opening into the boiler several feet above the ground. They had a ladder placed against the boiler and Lukai was on the domed roof taking off the chimney while the coolie was down below raking out the ashes and taking out the fire bars so that I could stand upright when inside the furnace. The interior was still hot, so we started to partly fill the boiler with cold water as high as the furnace crown, on which we would have to stand when inside the steam space. Although we had thrown buckets of cold water all around inside the furnace door. The interior was also fairly hot and stifling when I crept inside with a small lamp. Meanwhile, Lukai got into the boiler through the manhole overhead and between us we located the leak. As I expected, it was a small leak through the uptake tube. It had worn thin just there. Really, it was dangerous, but as it would take a week to get another boiler up and we could not stop the mine working, I had to patch it up as quickly as I could. I next got in the manhole beside Lukai, and while he held the lamp, I punched a round chisel or drift through the lick until I had made a round hole large enough for a half-inch bolt to pass through. This done, we got outside and found two pieces of plate of about two inches square, with a hole through the center of each for the bolt to pass through. These plates or washers were slightly covered, carved uh, so as to fit the tube. Wrapping the neck of the bolt with spun yarn and covering it with red and white lead, I treaded on a plate, first passing the second piece of plate up to Lukai, who had climbed into the manhole. Again, getting inside the fire door, I reached up the tube and pushed the bolt through the hole until the plate, well covered with lead and spun yarn, was pressing firmly against the tube. Lukai now threaded his piece of plate onto the bolt from the other side of the tube, first well leading and wrapping it, and all that now required to be done 
was for him to put on the nut and tighten up so that the leg would be tightly gripped by the plates inside and outside. Just then I heard the coolie scream and saw his legs and feet scampering up the ladder. He was now on top of the boiler shouting, Barg, means tiger. The sudden realization of my position now struck me for the first time. I was trapped like a rat in a trap. I was on the ground level and there was an open hole into the chamber. Could the tiger reach me with its claws through the open door? I felt that it could, and I knew then real fear such as few people ever experience. Thoughts raced through my brain quickly following one another. I thought of our relative positions. The coolie was on top of the boiler, high up out of reach of the tiger, and therefore safe. Lukai was inside the boiler, and the only opening into this part was the manhole and this was several feet above the ground. He was fairly safe, I thought, because the tiger could not climb up the smooth steel side. My position was the only one which was dangerous. I could now hear it moving about outside, and once or twice I caught a glimpse of its stripes as it passed the door opening. Because the night was dark, the stars were shining above us. The creature evidently had not yet discovered my presence and was concentrating its attention on the coolie above. It moved in silence, and both Lukai and the coolie were now silent. Suddenly, with a terrible snarl, it sprang upwards and I could hear its claws rasping on the steel plate as it slipped back. Its rage and snarls were now horrible and all the time I was pressing myself back against the far side of the boiler as hard as I could. Could it reach me when it discovered my presence? I measured the distance with my eye and I felt more hopeful. Suddenly the snarling stopped and I saw its head at the opening. It had found me. First it tried to force itself through the door but it could only get its head through and its fangs soon were snapping within a couple of feet of my body. Its breath came in horrid foul gusts filling the chamber with a sickening odor and its roars inside the confined space were enough to hurt my eardrums while its eyes were glaring into mine. I stood there fascinated with horror. I not knew that it could not reach me that way, but would it start reaching it with its claws? My imagination now began to visualize its claws reaching me and speculating as to what part of me it would reap up first. The constriction on my heart had almost become like a physical pain. Just then I heard something strike the boiler plate with a loud clang. Look, I had thrown his hammer, of course. How foolish of me! I had forgotten my hunting knife, which was in my belt. I would wait until it put its head in again and then try and jab the blade through its eye into the brain. Now it was reaching for me with its paw through the door opening and its claws came within a few inches of my body, opening and shutting in a horrible manner. It could not reach me, but I knew that if it had the intelligence of a human being, it would reach in sideways and then all would soon be over. It was too dangerous to try and slash its paw. Besides, it would do little good. I would wait. Again, it had got its head in the opening and I raised my knife but found that its teeth followed my hand and it was risky to strike because it was snapping all the time. Its top lip was lifted exposing fangs which seemed enormous and its whiskers were trembling with rage. Then I struck with all the suddenness I was capable of. I had missed and the knife only slashed down its nose because its head had moved. 
Quickly, the tiger backed out with a roar. Its rage now was so, so terrible that it even bit at the plate of the door opening. It was behaving outside like a rampaging demon, lashing its tail and sometimes springing up at the coolie who had now recovered his courage when he found himself beyond reach. Both he and Lukai were spitting and hissing and hurling abuse at it. Once on its upward spring, it caught its paw in the manhole door opening and hung there a minute while the rest of its claws were slipping and rasping on the steel plates of the boiler side. Then Lukai brought its banner down with all his force on its paw, nearly cutting it through on the sharp edge of the door opening. Now the creature was almost insane with rage. It had first been hit by Lukai on the back with a hammer, then its nose had been spilled by my knife. And lastly, its paw had been nearly cut off by the last blow. Presently, it put its head in the fire door again. And following Lukai's example, I struck it a heavy blow on the nose with my large hammer. Now a tiger's nose is a very tender and sensitive spot. And it is intended to be so because its whiskers have to guide it through the thick undergrowth in the dark and it feels the touch of any obstruction first through these and then through its nose. Consequently, the pain must have been extremely acute, judging by the noise it made. It then bounded off into the jungle. However, none of us ventured to leave our refuge before it was broad daylight. And in the meantime, we completed the work. Thank you.